this is Boone Country. We're in eastern Missouri on our way to Defiance, Missouri to visit the final home of Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone was born in 1734 and he would die here in 1820. Late in his life, Daniel Boone would come to Missouri and he would purchase over 800 acres. But he would never develop that property and instead he settled in the house belonging to his son, Nathan. This beautiful valley is, is just as lovely today as it was when Daniel Boone lived here for the last 20 plus years of his life. There are deep forests and rolling hills and streams and creeks and the Missouri River is very close by. A stunning paradise and just exactly the type of place that Daniel Boone loved. The house you see here is an excellent location to visit if you're interested in history and specifically if you're interested in the great Daniel Boone's life. The stonework was cut from a nearby quarry. The interior beams that support the frame of the house are oak and came from the nearby forest. The valley is just as beautiful today as it was then and a wonderful place to visit. The staff is excellent and you'll learn quite a lot about the remarkable life of Daniel Boone. The many exploits that made Daniel Boone famous are well known even today. He traveled through the Wilderness Road, through the Cumberland Gap and founded Boonesboro in 1775. During the same period at Boonesboro, he served in the colonial militia during the Revolutionary War when the British were recruiting the Shawnee to fight against the colonialists. One of the more famous exploits that was told about Daniel Boone's life is that in which the Shawnee kidnapped his daughter, Jemima, and two other girls. Boone went after them and he rescued them. The American author, James Fenimore Cooper, was inspired by this tale and in fact he wrote a book that was uh, loosely inspired by it called Last of the Mohicans. This is obviously a fictionalized account of what Boone did, but it is an interesting book to read and of course the film version starring Daniel Day-Lewis is a must-see for anyone interested in history. Daniel Boone's Missouri gravesite is a beautiful location. It is down a very long and winding road about five miles from the house. The property belonged to the Bryan family and it is not a formal graveyard. This was private property that was used during their lifetime as a graveyard. And here we are near Marthasville, Missouri and we're at the top of a hill and this is the original resting place of the great Daniel Boone and according to some people still the final resting place of Daniel Boone. It really depends on who you talk to and what you believe. From Defiance, Missouri, we drove 350 miles to Frankfort, Kentucky. It was here that we ventured out to visit the second resting place of Daniel and Rebecca Boone. The controversy over Daniel Boone's gravesite stems from the fact that when they exhumed his body in Missouri, they made a plaster cast of his skull, and in the early 1980s when they finally did a forensic analysis of that plaster cast, they determined that the skull was probably that of a black man. This has led people to believe, with some justification, that they dug up the wrong body. The only way this controversy would be settled would be to do a complete exhumation of both grave sites with DNA analysis and of course that is highly unlikely to happen.
Frankfort, Kentucky, uh, at the site of the second burial of Daniel and Rebecca Boone. And we're on a hilltop in the old Frankfort Cemetery. Daniel Boone and his wife Rebecca were allegedly uh, reinterred here in 1845. And uh, this is a beautiful location. Uh, and uh, the old Capitol building is down here, which you'll see in the videos. And of course the river, uh, the Kentucky River is down there. And uh, just a beautiful old cemetery, beautiful part of the country. Uh, as we follow the trail of Daniel Boone. Alright, so I want to mention that uh, in the great TV show in the 1960s starring Fess Parker, Fess Parker wore a coonskin cap like the one that I'm wearing. Daniel Boone did not historically wear a coonskin cap. He did, however, wear a beaver skin cap because the beaver skin and pelts were water resistant. And so the beaver uh, pelts were really valuable to woodsmen and hunters like Daniel Boone. I have put on the coonskin cap today just as a tradition, uh, a nod back to the uh, nostalgic uh, years of, uh, of yesteryear when uh, Fess Parker was both Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone. And today, as I mentioned in the earlier video, we are at Boonesboro State Park at the Boonesboro Fort. This is a reconstruction of Daniel Boone's legendary community. And let me tell you folks, if you get a chance to come here, please do so. The people here are fantastic. The knowledge of, of, uh, of the area, the historical depth that they go into. This is a staff that knows what they're doing. And the fort is absolutely magnificent. One of the best um, forts that I've been to in the country, and my wife and I have been to quite a few. So, for today, remember to mark your calendars next time you're on the road. In America, you come down here to the Richmond, Kentucky area and get over to the Boonesboro State Park and the fort. This is a site not to be missed. Boonesboro today is a park that is split into two sections. The first section is the campground, which is down by the river, and the other section is a reconstruction of the Boonesboro Fort. It is staffed by knowledgeable reenactors, so if you'd like to know how blacksmithing is done, of course you would stop and talk to the blacksmith, or, or you could talk to the gunsmith and learn about uh, having a, a Kentucky long rifle built for you. Welcome to Boone's World. You want some whiskey? It's coming right up. The day is growing long, and very soon now it will be time to hit the road yet again. Let's take one last look around before we say goodbye to Daniel Boone. 
Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, he was a big man. With an eye like an eagle, and as tall as a mountain was he. Daniel Boone was a man. He was a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and he was tough as a mighty oak tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The rippinest, roarinest, fightinest man the frontier ever knew. Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, he was a big man. And he fought for America to make all Americans free. Daniel Boone. What a boon. What a doer. What a dream come a truer was he. What a boon, what a doer, what a dream come a truer was he. What a boon, what a doer, what a dream come a truer was he.